Well, a very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the March edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Overall, the December through February period has been warmer and indeed wetter than normal across the UK and uh, parts of Northwestern and Western Europe. But it looks as if as we start to progress into the first month of meteorological spring 2016, uh, we are going to see a fairly cold start. Um, I believe strongly that El Nino has dominated the winter pattern. We haven't seen a, a, a negative NAO winter by any stretch. Only a one short spell during mid-January seen the, the North Atlantic Oscillation going negative. That shut down the westerly flow and allowed colder air to come in from the north and northeast. But it looks as if as we pressed through the month of uh, January into February, the polar vortex, which was very strong in December, bear in mind we had a record warm December. Even in January, we've seen temperatures drop to, to a low, we've seen temperatures drop to minus 12. We did see temperatures rise to 17 Celsius. Very, very warm for the coldest month of the year. But as we pressed through this winter, we did start to see changes taking place. The polar vortex, the uh, cold circulation over the Arctic region, did begin to weaken after being so strong in December. Allowed Arctic air and even Siberian air to come down into the middle latitude region. That was not um, present during the, the month of December. But what that did is it, it essentially allowed Arctic air to become more involved in the pattern even though we didn't really have blocking over the north atlantic and greenland areas of low pressure that continue to push west to east into the uk into europe contain somewhat colder air and therefore we had uh, slightly colder temperatures and of course that cold spell during the month of uh, january did help out of course bringing the first real snow and cold of the the winter season during the month of February, we've seen changes yet again. We've seen the Arctic Oscillation going back negative after a bit of a re re retreat. We've seen the polar stratosphere uh, uh, cool once again, re-strengthen. But then it weakened once again during the latter half of uh, January and the February. A warm start to February, but then we've seen uh, a record-breaking shot of cold air into the eastern half of the United States. And what that did was it flooded the middle latitudes with colder air. And a low, low pressure continued to push into the UK. These areas of low pressure were entrained by cold Arctic air, Greenland air. And therefore, we, see, we have seen a colder month during the month of February. So, essentially, as forecasted back on the 1st of November... 2015 should I say we we have always highlighted that February was going to be the coldest month El Nino tends to be colder during the second half of winter and February and March in particular as we go into the month of March stratospheric warming continues but rather than December January and even the month of February where it hasn't been uh, favorable for cold in Europe it looks as if we're going to start to see a change taking place. That strat warming, rather than being focused from Northeast Asia across the pole in the North America, yes, it is focused in North America once again, but it's also shifting that warming over the pole and across Greenland. So what does that suggest? A 10 to 50 millibars over the Arctic region. We have stratospheric warming that will encompass uh, Greenland as well. So what that does is it shifts the uh, block and high at 500 millibars down at 20,000 feet above the surface. Rather than just being over North America, over Northern Canada, it could shift more over towards Greenland for the month of March, which would suggest that we see the uh, shutdown of the Westleys and a colder month overall. February looks as if it's going to wind up slightly below normal. Given the chill that's expected from now till the end of February, it looks as if we are going to see a chillier than normal February uh, overall, which is quite interesting. The Canadian model 
for the month of March looks like this. Shows blocking over Canada. Cold trough underneath, but also you notice here the blocking, the positives, the reds over the Arctic and also over Greenland and Iceland. That suggests that we're going to see less westerly flow because that high then extends into the North Atlantic. And we've got the trough from the UK and Ireland over much of Europe here. So that is a very interesting look for March overall. Let's have a closer look at the European view of that. And you can see here that the model is showing the blocking to the west and the north. The big trough underneath encompassing especially the southern half of the British Isles here. So we could start to see a reverse upper flow here with the uh, more cold dominating uh, the UK and Ireland here during the month of March here overall with a potential negative North Atlantic oscillation here. I think the, the peaking of the El Nino has a part to play in it. The seasonal maturity as we go into the month of February, of course, the atmosphere is much different to what it was back in December. And uh, we could see a cold March, but I do think we could start to see a flip to a warmer, drier April. So we'll wait and see what happens do check out the march outlook online now and uh, thanks for watching if you're on youtube if you don't subscribe to marketingweather.com uh, give it a try uh, today um if you're especially if you're a weather enthusiast that wants to know more about the ins and outs why do we see what we see that's it for today have a great day and i'll be back again tomorrow on the website as always bye for now